Hi everyone and a very very warm welcome to Encounter EDU Premium and it's a delight to be here at Gravity Industries HQ, the workshop um, down in Wiltshire and fantastic uh, to have Richard with me, Chief Test Pilot and Founder of, yes, Gravi yeah, of uh, Gravity Industries. We're going to talk a lot about jet suits, I'm really really excited about this but before we start a few checks to go through now please do pop any questions you have into the chat app during the lesson we're going to take all of those in a Q&A session at the end and reminding you that if you want to have the chat app open and the video full screen on the whiteboard perhaps using a second device so teachers carers parents out there you can have the chat open on a smartphone and that means you can have the video full screen as well if there are any technical issues you're having there is a small green chat icon in the bottom right hand corner of every page of the encounter edu website click on that you'll get through to support and you, we will try and answer any of those questions that you have uh, but without further ado Richard, thank you so, so much uh, for having us. And, and really this, this, this wonders of human flight live lesson. And when I think about human flight, I think I'm about going on an aeroplane. You've taken it to a, an, another level. What made you first think about the potential for human flight? So I, I suppose my inspirations were from a number of different areas. I, I as, a, as a kid, grew up making and building and taking things apart. So I've always been quite inclined to go and uh, on that sort of maker journey. Um, in fact, I've gone full circle, really. It's what we do a lot of in this, in this room. Uh, my family was from the world of aviation and engineering as well. But actually, if I wind the clock forward, I was doing a kind of office job for 16 years. Uh, but I never lost the passion for that building and creating thing. Uh, I, I increasingly became quite inspired by when you think about it, what, what you can do with a human being, you know, you think about human beings, they, you know, athletes or pilots or surgeons or doctors or riding a bike or surfing or skiing. You know, it's amazing how you can adapt human balance and the human body to do such a wide variety of things. So when it comes to flight, I thought, how cool would it be if you could use your brain for balance like you do riding a bike and use your body not to wrestle some impossible power, but it occurred to me you really just have to lean on something you know we're standing on the ground and we're flying by standing on the ground it's providing a a force upwards so if you spread that around to your hands and your legs or your back maybe then you can support yourself and i, I mean it sounds still crazy doesn't it but i just thought <laughs> for the pure passion of the idea back in 2016 i just started experimenting and and i think we've got a video of, of you flying around in iceland uh before we get into sort of how that journey of being an inventor uh, and those ideas around it. I just want to give young people a sense of how cool it is. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it is, you know, I, for a start, I didn't, I didn't build this to uh, try and create an art piece. You know, it, it's lovely that people look at it and think it looks cool. I, I oft, I, I've come to realize that actually science fiction and, you know, in America, this is not something you need to explain, but science fiction represents, you know, pure human imagination and creativity. Uh, but it's not why I started. I just thought it would be a really cool, interesting thing to be able to try and achieve because the conventional wisdom at the time, you know, most adults thought um, that this couldn't be done. You couldn't carry enough fuel. You know, there'd be too much heat. Uh, the power would take your arms off or, you know, the, the gyroscopic moment. So the spinning of the engines would actually be impossible to manage. Turns out all of those assumptions are incorrect. And we learned that by actually safely going and experimenting and testing. But the net result, as you can see from that Iceland film, I mean, you feel as free as you do when you have that dream sometimes of flying where you just think where you want to go and you go um it is a genuinely amazing experience i mean we've had loads of people learn with us here in america and every single time people kind of lose their minds amazing and and take take, take me through you sort of you were sitting in your office doing a, a wonderful office job a wonderful office job yeah. <laughs> and or, or or not <laughs> uh, and you you just sort of, i'm i'm done with this you know what, I'm going to become a, a maker inventor. What, what, there must have been a sort of process that, that allowed you to start doing this full time. Yeah, I mean, I know this isn't a lesson on how to set up your own business, but actually you, you tempted me into just making a point here. 
it's pretty risky, especially when you're, you know, not a, you know, a, a, a sort of new graduate or a younger person. You know, I did this when I was in my late 30s or so. Um, I actually did this in my evenings and weekends. I experimented. I explored. We didn't really tell anybody about the idea. It was me and a couple of people. And we just experimented about what we could do before we actually went and um, started to form a company. I, I, I just endlessly trialed and explored before I then gave up the old day job, if you see what I mean. So actually, I think that is an important lesson. It, it's often about minimizing the risk of the idea. If I literally cut everything off and went, I'm going to build my own Iron Man suit. I and mean, again, I didn't do that, but that would be very risky because, it, it, you know, at the time I started this journey, I had no idea that it was going to be possible at all. Absolutely none. In fact, if you'd asked me, I would have put it at about 20 percent chance. Um, so what was the fir fir first first sort of step you took in, in order to achieve this this vision of, of human human flight and the jet suit? So having started with the vision of, of using human balance, a bit like a bicycle or, yep. or surfing or skiing, I thought I've got to add some horsepower. I've got to create the thrust in some way. And actually, little jet engines ended up being quite quickly the obvious choice. I mean, I, I've got one. Let me grab one here. I've got one here. I mean, this is one of the more modern ones now. That little cylinder sucks in air and pushes out so much air out of here so fast that it basically pushes with a force. Now, that sounds... Sounds kind of crazy and, and, and unimaginable, but actually the result is if you lean your hand on a surface here, if you can see down here leaning on a table, then that force could be substituted by actually that engine. Now, that was the theory. And so really to answer your question, the first stage was bench testing these and getting to know how to, well, particularly turn them off um, and realizing that the force was really quite manageable. And so there was, there was a test rig we can maybe, maybe dig out later where I had the very first engine on my arm just to feel what that force would be like. Because not many humans have ever really done that. And you have to be very careful with the safety. And yet the learning was it just felt spongy and just like a fire hose of water. It just felt perfectly safe and easy to control. And and just we're going to explore the jet suit in a bit more detail um, in a bit. And I also just, just get more into the, the sensation of, of human flight. Uh, but what I wanted to ask, and, I, and particularly for, for students watching, I'm imagining you didn't get it right first time. How, how, what is the importance of, of being allowed to fail when you're an inventor, when you're a founder? Absolutely. So, so the first thing to say is that, that some people ask me, so, you know, did you go and build it and then stand there on day one and start it up and try and learn to fly? No, because as I've described, the first stage was... First stage was, was an engine on a test bed. Second stage was engine on my arm when I absolutely could predict how it would behave and how I could turn it off and how I could sort of manage the power up and down. But then if you added one on each arm or one on one arm, what if you ha have one on each arm and then you double them to mean that the force is going right up your arm. So you've got one here and one here. And then you realize that's not enough power. So then you add some in, in the early stages. It was to the back of the legs. So there was actually lots of little stages that took place. But all the time, just like you're saying, all the time, there was a massive focus on thinking about what was the worst that could happen and could we manage that? So you're not just sitting in a chair with a load of engines, light them up and see what happens. I mean, that would be terrifying. The way we fly, you can actually flare them. You know, we're going to talk about forces and thrust. Um, you can flare them to the side, which means there's nothing pushing down, which means you can still now with one of these suits, even though it's 1500 horsepower, in fact, more than that, you can put it on full power and just point the engine to the side and lean forward and not take off. So you're always in control of how much power is going down. So it was never a risk of suddenly shooting off like a rocket, which is a good thing. We're, we're going to go, go through this. And I know that students have got um, uh, a student sheet worksheet to, to go through so the different elements of, of what makes up a, a one of these suits. But we've got a, a video of you testing. I think you've got a wingsuit on as well. We, we've asked a lot of people who, who've done something, who've done very, very cool things. What was that first experience like and as we watch this video of you test testing the uh the suit can you just describe the sort of emotions the feelings the sort of the sense of of, of flying I mean, two, two parts to that, that question if you like the very first time we we achieved a proper flight in around november 2016 there was a little engine on the back of each leg two on each arm and it was six seconds of wobbly flight across this little farmyard that was a major moment. That was the moment when I knew this would work. But the film you're seeing now, 
that was when we went into the whole world of testing adding wings because if you just pause for a moment and think that um, the Harrier plane or the F-35 that people might have seen that takes off by blowing air downwards and then gradually blows the air backwards and uses the wings to fly so why couldn't we do the same thing and the film you're seeing is actually us doing that so you start to propel yourself forward and then generate lift from the wing okay and it actually worked really great I mean we set the Guinness World Record for 85 miles an hour doing this and the feeling though was amazing because we couldn't test this we did wind tunnel tests we did all sorts of maths around what might work uh, but actually the experience of progressively edging into faster and faster feeling that airflow and transitioning to the point where you're actually flying by moving the air rather than your arms that was an experience no other human being has really had on this earth uh, and is only matched by the experience of coming out of that trans uh, out of that wing flight when you want to get out of it, I remember the moment still of thinking, well, how do I how do I stop? How do I slow down? Because I'm now flying really fast and I've turned the power down because I'm generating lift from the wing. And actually, the answer was you sweep your arms forward a tiny bit, throw the thrust forward, slow down, and suddenly you drop out of the lift. So you had to quickly turn the power back up. Otherwise, you were just sinking. But anyway, it, it was an amazing experience. I mean, the film doesn't do it justice in some ways it was just all your senses are absolutely on fire and it would take me usually a couple of days after those test flights to properly be able to process the feelings and sensations because my brain was 100 percent occupied with subconsciously thinking about what it was doing i mean consciously i'm not really thinking about much at all but there was so much processing going on a very weird experience and and if you if you could use sort of two or three sort of emotional words as it seems to be was there a, a peacefulness was there a sort of sense of sublime for one of all or, or I, mean, I, I mean i think i think you know racing car drivers report that when they're in the zone yeah it's actually this inner calm and you're in flow state but to everybody else it, there's crazy chaos going on and actually consciously you know the racing car driver wants to deliver the race wants to do as best they can and knows they're doing something where if they lose their concentration it could be dangerous i would say it's all of those things together it is a weird tranquility but you're you're focused on delivering a job. I mean, one day maybe we'll we'll come back and we'll have we'll have a go. I would love to. Uh, but for all the classes watching, students watching, uh, Richard, you're very kindly going to sh sort of show us and take us through this jet suit behind us here, the different components, how that works, how that relates to some of the science of forces that you're studying. And you will have a, uh, a worksheet, a student sheet. Um, and so it's got six of the main parts. We'll get those parts up on screen as, as we go, go through them. But just, you can just label, label them off. And also, if you have any questions about how those work, don't forget, put those in the chat app and we'll get to those at the end of the lesson. So, Richard, we, we, have, we have one of these suits here. Uh, we've got them. We've got them. Well, we've got them everywhere. Um, yes. So yes, I can talk you through a little how this this works. So this is the backpack structure. So just to be really clear, the human should be sitting in here, as if wearing it like a backpack. Okay. And then what you do is you slide your arms into these. So this structure here. There you go. There's an engine either side, and your arm goes down into this hole. In fact, I can probably do it. So there's your arm in here. And the result of the force here and the force here, so they're blowing air out very fast. The net result is that feels like there's a force pushing your fist, which when you keep your arms relatively straight, actually feels like you're just simply leaning on a surface. So you're, you're just leaning on each of these arms, if you like. And round the back, let's see if we can spin this round a little without me dropping everything. Um, around the back here on this latest version this actually has three little engines buried in the back here there we go I thought I dropped something um, you can just about see here there's three three of the same engines in the back here and they push out down the down through the you know through where the table is that is essentially if we spin that around a bit there we just leave it like that um, that is the third leg of your support so if you think about you've got support on each arm and then you've got a third leg, a bit like a camera tripod. You've got that third leg of support round your back. That is your stable camera tripod of support. Um, and it might come as an interesting kind of fact that you don't really fly this by increasing or decreasing the throttle. So in a car, you obviously have the pedal to increase and decrease the engine power. Actually, with this, you do trim the power up and down a bit. With this, what you really do 
there is the throttle trigger in there if you can see that so it's just a simple trigger so you if you start the suit then it'll just idle and tick over if you then squeeze that trigger and hold it it'll go to whatever you've preset the power to so let's say 70 percent power and after that it's all about vectoring so it's all about pointing your arms if you point them both down most of the thrust goes down and you rise up if you want to come down again then you just flare them out and you can see there's less thrust actually um, keeping you in the air so if you did this it's just squishing you and that is why we get this really precise control that you can see all over social media and why we can do crazy things like fly up to somebody who's feeding you a chocolate bar for instance um, and that's where all the control comes from so, so, and and just just to go through the go through so you, you've got seven jet engines with the latest version with the latest version the, the previous version you just just have one big engine on the back okay this is just the latest version yes and so, so two jet engines on on each arm mm -hmm. and, and and when when we, when you say jet engine is is and i think you've got the, got the bear, bear sort of like one behind you richard yep. when you, you talk about sort of jet engine this is this is essentially the same that if you've ever been on a on a commercial jet this is what's this is what's propelling it it, it is essentially around pretty much the same thing so let, let's talk about jet engines for a minute so what they're really doing is sucking air in through here this is called a, a centrifugal compressor it's like a turbocharger for anybody who is in, interested in cars it whizzes round and sucks air into the engine and then in here it meets with the fuel and when you burn the fuel as you can imagine it creates lots of hot air that hot air wants to escape and it escapes out of the back end of the engine out through here as it comes out, it pushes very hard and propels the engine in that direction. But whilst it's doing that, and you'll be experts on jet engines with this last piece, it spins past that turbine wheel, which you can possibly see spinning in there. I don't know if you're going to be able to see in there. Maybe, maybe not. Um, that little turbine wheel, like a little windmill, windmill wheel, um, is actually connected to the bit that squeezes the air in the front end. So it's a super, super simple machine, really. Uh, there you go you can see the compressor spinning so imagine the similar kind of thing the other end and so actually it's doing a not dissimilar thing to a car engine but in one straight line and that's why they produce so much power because there's not the big weight and and reciprocating in a motion of a car engine it's actually a very simple machine but it turns the fuel into a huge amount of thrust and, and just if you want to be yeah. a super expert on jet yeah. engines the yes. only difference with what you have really on a plane that you go on holiday with, when you're walking up the steps and look down through that engine, you have a huge fan attached to the front instead of this starter motor, which blows a load of cold air down past the engine. That's actually a very efficient way of using jet engines. We don't have that bit, we just have the middle jet engine piece. And and you make these or you... you, you... We don't make these. Um, there's lots of people them. who make these engines um, okay. for lots of different reasons. And so we work with one of the manufacturers that made this one pretty much specially for us. Uh, and it's it's a crazy little machine to give you an idea when that's going full power, that wants to go that way towards you yes. with a force of 25 kilos. So anybody who's got quite a big dog, medium sized dog, probably about 25 kilos, this thing, I mean, th this is not a good idea, but it would be able to lift or hover a 25 kilo dog, let's say. I've never characterized it in that way but that's about the power it's pretty amazing for something that only weighs two kilos so, so, it's okay. amazing a jet powered dog uh, and then seven of them for 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 a jet powered human yes i mean that that's enough power to be able to lift enough fuel and a pilot with some equipment and fly for five minutes or so perfect and and but but you you, you buy in the jet engines with there's a 3d printer that was worrying before and um, we've got archie in this amazing sort of who, who, who's in the workshop behind us do you make everything else so yeah, we've got quite a big engineering team now and uh, all the equipment that we really use, I mean, you can see all sorts of mostly testing and development going on in the background. Um, we get built for us various components. So you might be able to see a funny uh, fuel tank that's sort of silhouetted against the window there. Um, that's a very large fuel tank we're playing with at the moment. Um, all the structure, the green and tan colored, green and yellowy colored plastic, essentially, it's polypropylene, all of that is 3D printed and we work with different 3d printing companies that, that produce some of the biggest 3d printed parts you can get actually and it's great because you can keep adapting the design online um, as you keep changing your mind with plans you know with, with ideas so we tend to go out test learn something come back and adapt to the design so yeah it, it's very much about experimentation in here amazing so so and and um the jet engine is made out of metal 
this is all made out of plastic the rest of the structure so, yeah polypropylene is is, is a, an easily printed plastic and the okay. nice thing is that actually it's all quite kind of spongy and soft and when you think about connecting power to a human being um if it was all carbon fiber and titanium and we've used those yep. they're very cold and hard and stiff and that just doesn't connect with a human very well this is all quite warm and spongy so it feels like it's part of you when you're flying it um so it's a really nice material we, we, we've done all sorts of materials and this is what we prefer at the moment and and one one last thing i know that we're, we're moving on shortly to trying to, to set up our own little uh balloon powered um jet suit i call yes. it jet suit we, we will have a we'll have a couple of little, <laughs> yes. little, little pilots test pilots which we'll, we'll introduce you shortly um one of the things that we had which i know that you've you've since, since, since we initially sort of looked at this you've invented beyond was a sort of heads up display was a sort of the, the helmet display so yes for quite some time we used to use uh, a system i mean it, you know you see that in in marvel films and you see you know jet fighters using them a heads up display system is, is where you've got the information kind of hovering like a hologram in front of you we've flown with them many times uh, over the years actually it's a good example of where the technology is great but actually is kind of over the top for what you really need okay. so actually sometimes the answer is go simpler and so this little system here it's like a, a little screen with buttons that sits on your chest it's got a nice reliable wire which means you don't have to keep collecting you know, connecting bluetooth for instance I'm sure everybody's familiar with the challenges of connecting bluetooth sometimes halfway through so, a flight exactly well yes and, and if you lose your you know information halfway yeah. through a flight that's really annoying whereas this is super reliable and very simple but yes we've flown with all manner of different uh, informational systems brilliant so just to go over uh for for students we have a um arm turbines yep. turbine jet engine so um, a turbine or a jet engine, I mean, they, they are equally um, applicable. Strictly speaking, these yes. are called turbojets. But I mean, there they sound go. very cool, but there that is their scientific name, if you like, or engineering name. Um, we've got the backpack structure, so that sort of that sort of melds it to you. So you and contains the fuel. And contains well. the fuel. We, so the fuel is actually in, in a bladder system. So if you, anybody knows like what a camelback is, where you have like a drink on your back in a bag, yep. that's the same kind of structure we use, which is great. Because importantly, you don't get air in it. Because if you get air into the fuel lines, then suddenly the engine's drinking air and it can't run off just air. No. Nope. Um, so this is a really nice way of containing the fuel. And, and what, what fuel do you use? Is, is it any old? Jet fuel or diesel, interestingly. Okay. Most adults don't know that they're pretty much the same thing. Uh, diesel really? is just a little bit more smoky. And we have run biodiesel and biojet as well. And we're trying as much as we can to run those uh, you know, as much as we can. And are there other sort of innovations in terms of sort of different forms of fuel or...? We built an electric version. You, you can have. see that on our Instagram page. Um, we flew it last for Jeff Bezos, of all people. Okay. Um, and it does work, but it is very hard to make it efficient because batteries, as everybody knows, are very heavy. But as the batteries get better and better and lighter and lighter, then I predict the electric suit will gradually overtake the jet engine suit, um, and it'll be great when it does. Perfect. Uh, Richard, thank you so, so much uh, for, for that overview. Both of you are amazing, sort of, you know, condensed life story <laughs> your <laughs> persistence uh and and the imagination of, of what's possible and then take taking us through the suit um can i ask uh for a hand in seeing whether we can we can we can take students through yeah let's build our little balloon a uh, little balloon a balloon suit um and and really for, for for those watching it's this this basic basic idea of of thrust going in one Yes, I mean, I, I tell you what. Let me do, let me add to something. Yes. So th this this thrust idea. I mean, if you uh, get a medicine ball, let's say, or a basketball, and you're standing in the gym and you throw it really hard away from yourself, yep. you might notice, especially if it's a very heavy ball, that you ha you step back, you stumble back, and that's a, a Newtonian force of you throwing mass one way. Yep. It has to push back the other way. And that's really all these engines are doing and all your balloon is hopefully going to do. But so we'll so good old Newton, every action has an opposite and equal reaction. We will we'll set up, um, our, if I can ask you, I think there's a nail um, just down here, um, which, yes, that one there. Okay. That should just, um, or we just go, go, go for the nail Slide there. Oh, yes, I've got it. There we go. Perfect. And if I could just ask you to hold that. Yep. So uh, for classes watching, we, there's a full activity and investigation sheet on this. So we, what we're doing today was just investigating and demonstrating sort of how you can replicate this at home 
or in the classroom. So, uh, wonderful Ellie, who's behind the camera. We've got Richard holding on to the setup here, but I was going to introduce you to some some of the the characters um, involved. So, <laughs> you will need an array of plastic toys. Volunteers. Uh, volunteers, happy volunteers um, of different sizes. Uh, so, this one comes here. I will then uh, put, you will need a balloon or lots. So I'm think each, each balloon represents a turbo jet. So we'll see, you know, mm. so I want you to experiment also at home how many turbo jets you might need for different tasks. You will need a little clip or a clothes peg. And then also you will need some tape. So then we'll just come back to what we've got set up here. As it, actually, I'm really interesting. This is going to come into what I want love to talk about next, which is your mountain rescue. Right. Um, so imagine this is your uh, a mountain that you will, 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 we're sending a jet suit up. We've strung a piece of string, so it's quite tight, and we've threaded a straw onto it. I'm just going to blow up a. If you've ever wanted to be a, as a children's TV presenter, and you know. Not really. <laughs> it sounds very hard work. <laughs> so you're injecting the energy, really, because you're putting the effort in to stretch that balloon to fill it full of air. And that air wants to get out. So I'm just going to roll this up a bit. And then what we'll do is I'm going to put the. Hopefully, this will be strong enough there. And what we're going to do, which I'm going to ask you to hold that with yes. the other hand, is we're just going to take this. To here. And then we're going to select. This is, of course, the worst tape in the world right at the moment there we go i've got this i'm just going to come around the other side oh, and we'll put one tape on there and then we'll come with another piece of tape so really important to tape this in two places and that means that the balloon will run along with the straw always when you do something live richard is when the tape behaves in strange ways <laughs> yeah. there we go fantastic and we'll just lay that over there so for the camera there you go you can see that's running that's along it. there so that should go that way now what i would like to do based on your in-depth knowledge of jet suits they look pretty heavy to me. I'm choosing so the small one immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the small one, the medium-sized one, or the dinosaur is going to so get up a hill? A good testing principle would be start with the easiest one first and then work from there to see at what point it doesn't work. See, I knew you were yeah, the yeah, right I'm person. I'm nervous to... of the dinosaur. You're... More than one reason. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to tape, tape. And I know this is exactly how you um, attach. He's also got a helmet on. So there you oh, go. You, you're right. Um, and I know this is this is exactly he how looks ready. he absolutely looks ready. There we go. Can you see him on the camera? There we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And so we'll just take this back gonna, a I'm little gonna, bit. I'm going to let you release that. I'm going to take this off. I'm also going to see if I can. There we go. Now, for a moment of truth. <laughs> will will this Will there be enough force thrust coming from this balloon to counter the gravity and take this up? Yeah. What do you reckon? And all that string friction. And all that. Yeah, just, just. <laughs> yes. yes. And he's back. There we go. <laughs> so, as you very, very wise words from Richard, start with the smallest one first. Find out what the biggest one you can do is. Experiment. Play with it. Decide. 
predict, observe how many balloons would you need to get a dinosaur? Well, and here's an idea. Here's how you can better even, even his experiment. If you put a balloon either side, a bit like how we put a jet engine either side of your hand, that balloon is going to try and make that straw do that and rub on the string. If you put a balloon either side, it'll be much more balanced and run smoothly. So I reckon you'll lift even two dinosaurs. Who knows? Uh, that would be an, a, a nice enhancement of this. Perfect. You've got the sheets online. Do explore in class at home afterwards. Richard, thank you so, so much. If Should we un, undo our little te te test oh, really? line? Yes. If we can grab it off the, 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 the little screw there. Perfect. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we have, I think, one or two uh, questions, uh, um, one or two or lots of questions um, right. that, this, <laughs> that, that have come through. Um, absolutely amazing. Um, first question is, is what is a jet suit? Um, which I think we've, we've, we've covered. Um, from St. Vincent's um, is a question around how does it work? And, and you've covered the tripod idea a little bit. I'm going to step back, Richard, because before we, we we started recording this live, you did you did a sort of wonderful a bit longer explanation oh, oh. of the tripod for. So I'm going to give give you some space. Yes. Yeah, so so if we go back to basic principles, so these things are like imagine a fire hose of water coming out, so it wants to go that way. So if you attach these to two to each arm and you've got some on your back, the result is that if you can see me in the camera. You've got thrust coming out of here, thrust coming out of here, and thrust on your back, which is pushing you forward a bit. That creates that triangle of support. You've got forces like fire hoses of water like that. And as you pinch them in, bring your arms in, more of that force is going down and you rise. If you flare out your arms and you, your back naturally flares too, you sink back down again. And all of the other fine controls become as intuitive as a bicycle. Actually, on a bicycle, you're making very small weight shifts uh, adjustments that you're not even aware of. The brain is an amazing balancing tool, and we're just using that. Absolutely amazing. Uh, the next question is: Do you have to be a professional to use a jet suit? Can, 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 could I just put this on, go outside? So uh, a bit like even riding a bike or surfing or skiing, there is a learning process you go through. We have a training rig where you get connected to a, a rope which not to hold you back, but it means as you're learning the balance, you can't even fall over. And we do that in the UK and in America. And we've had people learn within about 10 minutes. And we still don't take them off the rope because you can fly around and if you get it wrong, then the rope is there. But to come off that tether, you know, some people learn it within a couple of days. It's actually much quicker than even sometimes some people learning to ride a bike, but you do have to learn. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, really, really lovely. Um, how, how, how did you learn this from, from um, Wheels School? Um, how, how, how did you learn all of this? Did you, I, th I think there's an idea that you have to go to school and you have to go to university and you have to train rather than, I'm not saying make it up. So, okay, so, so there's two things to say here. So one is it's really important to do as best as you can at school because that opens all the doors to go and doing things like this. However, once you've done all of that and you've got as best exams as you can, actually you'll find all the new stuff isn't in the textbook. If it's a 100 page textbook, you've got to go and invent pages 101 to 120 that weren't there. A lot of this really wasn't in a textbook at all. So you've got to go and apply that, if I may say, childlike creativity. Ch children, young people are much better at thinking up new ideas than adults because you've been, as an adult, told you can't do things. When you're a child, you've got these fresh ideas. This was almost like a childish idea that shouldn't have worked and look what happens. And, and then connecting those to the idea of a jet, the idea of forces, these are things that you learn at school and you can apply them in. in Completely, you, yeah. yes. So it, it's learning, taking the opportunity from school to arm yourself with all of that information and then build on it. That's what humans have done for about 2000 years plus. So that's that's why it's on the test. Forces is on the test so you can you can design a jet suit. Right. No, and lots of other applications um, and lots of others, yeah. uh, as well. Um, follow up question is, is this is a great, great question. Will jet suits ever be released on the wider market for the general public? Can 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 anyone get one of these? So, for now, you you know, going to the shops, going to school in a jet suit, it will be about as practical as taking a Formula One car to the shops or to school. In theory, you could because it's a car, but the practicality of it is not there. Um, this is amazing for paramedics going up mountains. This is amazing for um, some of the armies around the world doing things they need to do, and it's an amazing 
fun toy, if you like, for going and racing over water with lots of uh, other people. So it's niche. In other words, it's got small specific uses. Like, would you take a jet ski across America, you know, across the Atlantic to America? Well, I'm sure somebody has, but it's not a good idea. <laughs> you know, it's got its own applications in certain realms, if you like. And, and you, you touched on um, that sort of r rescue scenario, and I really loved um, the video you have. I think it's up in the Lake District. Mm. Is it Helvellyn? Yeah. I think it is. Where, you know, I've had friends on, on, on mountain rescue teams, and, and they do an amazing, amazing job. Talk, talk us through sort of you know the application so there we got invited to go to the lake district to explore what you could do in in the mountains with this and um yeah the film you're you're seeing now is probably the uh one of the latest ones although uh, here's a secret we're going to hopefully double this kind of um uh, range and endurance very soon but here if you imagine somebody's uh, been walking up the mountain and they've had a cardiac arrest, you know, a heart attack, or they're, they've fallen as a climber and they're bleeding, or maybe they've got breathing difficulties. All of those medical emergencies need immediate help. In the weather you're gonna see in this film, at the top, it was so bad that no helicopters could operate. And the point where we launched from a car, the mountain rescue people getting out and walking would take about an hour and 20 minutes to go up the actual footpaths. You'll see towards the end of this film that flying in a you know pretty much direct route, nice and low, so it's nice and safe, it took us three and a half minutes to get there. So if you're having a medical emergency, you know, do you want an hour and a half or no helicopter or three and a half minutes for that paramedic to get to you? And and if, if you take a step back and think a, a medic on a motorbike or a bicycle, we've all seen them around cities, they're not taking you to hospital, they're providing the same critical care support. They're keeping you alive and buying you that probably hour before you need to get to hospital. So this is what we've been experimenting with the equipment. And it's, um, I mean, that was an amazing experience doing that because I couldn't see, as you'll see with, from the camera, we actually lost the drone. Look, the, the fog was so bad. Both drones dropped out. We had two of them, one following and one, one with the human flying it. And in the end, uh, it was just the camera on my shoulder left and even that got covered in water. Uh, and I couldn't really see much more around me than you're seeing on that camera footage there. And I just followed, it was actually an iPhone navigation tool. And I just had to kept, keep on looking down, steering myself towards the, the top of the mountain where the trig point yep. was. And uh, there out of the horrible gloom appeared the trig point. And uh, it was amazing. I couldn't believe when I radioed back to the team that I'd managed to get there so quick. Absolutely amazing and a really wonderful application. There is a, there's a follow-up um, student sheet jet suit journeys for you to draw write cartoon storyboard your own imagined journeys for a jet suit so so we'd love to see um any of those please do share them online or, or email them them in and i'm sure that the the um social media handles uh will be shown on screen shortly um of course with all of these wonderful things um classes would like to know <laughs> How much does it cost to, to make one of these? So, uh, well, making them is a secret. I mean, Lamborghini wouldn't tell you how much it costs to make a Lamborghini. Um, uh, but in terms of selling them, we actually haven't made a big thing of selling them because okay. if somebody gave us loads of money, took it away and did something dangerous or silly with it, then we wouldn't be able to carry on. So we actually more lease them and do exercises with them and invite many of our clients to come over and actually learn with us and race with us. Uh, but the round number, and we have sold a few, is about half a million dollars, which is about £400,000. Wow. You know, it helps us accelerate the journey of making it even better. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, this is a lovely question, um, which is, uh, what's the coolest place that you've flown? So what is it completely crazy is that in five years, nearly six years of doing this, we've done 230 events across 38 separate countries because it all wow. packs into suitcases you can take on holiday and then you get some diesel or some jet fuel and fly straight away. So it's amazing. This equipment, not these ones particularly, they've been absolutely all over the world. So I guess opening the Japanese baseball season, uh, that was pretty wild. I guess, uh, yeah, meeting people like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and flying for them was pretty wild. Um, I'd say flying in the Brazilian jungle for a, for a reason I'm not allowed to share yet. That was interesting. Um, Arizona mountains, um, uh, the Iceland film you saw, that was pretty magic. We did that with Bear Grylls actually. There are so many different events, uh, usually with some pressure on to deliver it, but afterwards you just take a moment to think, gosh, that was amazing. I mean, we've flown off aircraft carriers, you name it. It's hard to put my finger on one favorite. Brilliant. Um, so many questions. We're going to have to sort of go, 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 go through some of them quite, quite quickly. I'll do some quick fire ones. 
We've got from St. Vincent what powers it, and that's the jet fuel or diesel. Yeah. Yes, or by diesel or by jet, jet engines, and yes, that's the power. Um, interestingly, ha have you had any, any nasty crashes or, or, or during the development phase, that yes. things may have gone not... You can see there, we've even put some of the fails on our uh, Gravity Industries YouTube channel, you can see that. Um, yes, when you're developing anything new, things will go wrong. It's just critical that when they do go wrong, it's not a serious incident. So we've fallen many times from kind of this height. Um, no one's ever broken an arm or a leg or anything like that. Uh, but yes, I, I did hit a cliff once quite slowly coming back from Bear Grylls' actual island. Um, but no, nothing ever very serious. Um, question. Um, are they are they set to a specific weight? I mean, if I got in one, we're slightly different sizes. If Really good question. So when I described about vectoring, um, as you point the power down, and if you find you haven't got enough power, then there's a little little nudge switch, we call it, where you, every time you click, it puts a bit more power into all the engines, or opens the throttle a bit. And so you can trim the power according to the air temperature and the weather and your weight, or if you what you're carrying. So you trim the throttle. It'll do. It'll take about 100 kilos. 100 kilos? Yeah. Okay, I'm you know, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Take you easily. Take me easily. Thank you very much. Um, this, these are so, so many. Um, can you, okay, can you do acrobatics? The backflip. Yeah, I know that's what somebody wanted to ask. I'm absolutely sure we always get asked, can you do a backflip in them? Um, I think you could. The problem is you'd have to do it over water to do it safely. And as you're learning, you probably throw a suit in the water every single time. And it costs about $10,000 to repair the engines every time you go for a swim. So it's quite an expensive experiment, but I'm pretty sure you could. And a lot of our pilots are gymnasts and stunt people. And so they've always been asking this as well. We'll see. Um, so I think we've got time just for, for, for three more questions. Um, very, very sadly, um, but they're awesome questions. Um, and this one is, is, did you work alone on this? When I very first started, there was one other person I needed to fill my knowledge gap. And that was around some of the coding to control the engine. So it was me and one other person. And then as it started to grow, I mean, now we've got a wide team of 20 people or so. Uh, but yes, and that was a big thing, actually, because you can access so much online now. You can teach yourself the gaps in your knowledge. So I learned how to CAD design. I've, I've learned lots of things like that. Um, and that meant that I'm not having to either pay loads of money for something that never might have turned into this. And it meant I could be super fast as well. So trying to arm yourself with as much of your the required skills made this possible. And then what what is what is the team brought beyond? Oh, they're all way better than me now. So <laughs> so um, I've just uh, ended up having lots of people come to me wanting to work for me uh, with me that have much better skills in whether it's CAD design or uh, engineering skills or organizing our events or we I stand back and let my brilliant team do most of the work now. And and, <laughs> and we've got one last question, uh, which is what else have you designed and made? Was this the first? invention you had or, or, or um, have you been no so here's here's a good thing so um my 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 desk job that we mentioned at the beginning which yes. actually did pay me some good money which is very important i got that job because when i was at university i decided that uh, motorcyclists and people doing military training and walking in the mountains um would really benefit from a nice fleecy thing around their neck i mean it's called a snood now i think and so i actually set up a little business to start making those and selling them quite cheaply to people in those areas and that business made a little bit of money, but actually taught me so much about running a business, having an idea, turning it into a product and selling that product for more than it costs to make it. That's what got me that job. So I've, I've yes, invented lots of things over the years, but this is the most public one. <laughs> Perfect. Richard, it's been a real, real pleasure to have you on Encounter with you. Thank you so much My pleasure. for sharing, for helping young people understand more about the importance of forces, inventing, innovation excitement and 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 really the art of what's possible don't 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 let anybody limit your imagination let me quickly summarize that have the crazy idea but quickly work out how you can test it where when it goes wrong because it should be going wrong if you're properly trying to do anything unusual when it goes wrong don't hurt yourself or anybody else don't run out of money and don't get your get don't get in trouble in other words okay those are the three things i mean we call it reputation those are the three things safety money and reputation and then just go and experiment as long as you're fine with those brilliant it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so so much again pleasure thank you i mean for all those wonderful questions it's been amazing having you uh, on board with us today until the next time it's goodbye from us bye bye